Today is a beautiful day. My mom, my father, he was an alcoholic, but my mom did most of the raising. Did the regular kid stuff, grew up, went to high school, didn't never make it through. And I came up here to DC, not here, DC was my next destination with my sister. I basically just wanted to be, you know, doing what most teenagers are doing. The big lights, DC, everybody was talking about how good it was and how you can survive here, you get more money. So basically that's why we came. I had just been released from jail and I was referred to the shelter because I had nowhere to go. Uh, no job, very little money, and things looked a little bit bleak. It was very uncertain, you know, to try to fit in in a new environment and uh, not knowing what to expect. I was kind of very, I felt a little bit stranded. It was after the Great Recession, so finding work was difficult. My family and I migrated to Virginia fleeing domestic violence. My mother was fleeing domestic violence. And when we got to Virginia, oh my God, it was beautiful out here. Grass, black paths, bike trails, something that you don't see out in Southeast DC. All I wanted was that all-American dream, you know. I wanted to have a profession. And somehow I took a left turn instead of a right turn. The beginning, it was rough because like I said, I got into a lot of the street life. I thought that I could make more money doing illegal things, which I did for a while, but in the end, it didn't pay off for me. So I ended up getting caught up in the law, going to jail. I didn't have anything, so I, all I had to do was just try to make a life. Just doing crazy stuff. I started smoking marijuana, but then it got to the point where I started buying it. Because my addiction became so out of control, um, my home was raided. ATF and all kinds of police bust into my home with rifles and automatic weapons. I haven't felt this in a while. <laughs> mm. I lost my housing as a result of the raid um, and I had nowhere to go. My social worker pushed me so hard to get into this shelter called New Hope Housing. I heard about New Hope Housing by social service. I came in and everybody just treated you like you were human. I mean, they didn't look down on me. They didn't know me, but they knew I was homeless, but they didn't treat me as if I was some dirty or uh, diseased person. They treated me like a human. And I felt so safe. I had never felt as safe as I felt that night. The things that New Hope Housing has done for me, gosh, they, they've made me the woman I am today, actually. When I first came there, I was kind of depressed because I had lost my job at the Goodwill, so I had been looking for a job. I kept going and I kept going, and then they sent some uh, volunteers there to help us out with our um, uh, resumes. You know, and I kept saying, I can do this. I know I can. I'm not gonna let my age, I'm not gonna let my past stop me from doing what I know I can do. And lo and behold, a job came up. I was blessed enough to get a, a 24 year old car, which my father gave me, but it was good enough to get me to, from point A to point B and actually get a job. I had to be there at 5.30 every morning. So I had to get up here at 4 a.m and I was quickly promoted. And what I did is um, they placed me at the front desk and I was something like a receptionist. And I helped, you know, whatever they needed me to do, I did it. And that's when I started dreaming about, ah, I know what I want to do. We welcome the unwelcome. People who have not been successful, sometimes with us, sometimes with other people, um, and have sort of given up on the system and being able to change their lives. Those are the people we really would like to see and try to help. So it could be help with employment, help with looking for a home and submitting an application. It can be um, help getting a GED. It can be all sorts of things. Our goal was to find you know, a source of income so we could move out on our own 
And the housing locator, Kevin Monlock, he was instrumental in negotiating with landlords to have people move in. And so he was instrumental in my being able to move out of the shelter and move into permanent housing. Ms. Young, she is remarkable. Then all of a sudden she said, no, I know a place that'll take you. I said, you do? She said, come on, get in the van, let's go see. I'm in the van with her coming over to here, Southern Towels. This is something that I worked for. I came from nowhere and I made something. So we have staff who support people when, once they've moved into housing. We provide some supports to some people financially, but we also have case manager who goes and meets with people in their homes, listens to their concerns, um, helps them with budget, make sure they pay their rent. Um, if they need food, gives them re community resources and just, you know, play and tries to make a difference in, in supporting them so they can keep out of homelessness again. I was there, I know. Those people work hard to help you get to where you want to go. You come to New Hope Housing and they will help you get there. I got an email out of the blue from Pam Michelle saying I, she thought I would be a great candidate for the Consumer Advisory Council. Well, I went ahead and, and went for it and found out that there's a whole different side of fighting homelessness. My advocacy work helped determine my career through seeing things from the other side of the picture. Um, I got to see the administrative side of things and it really stoked a desire in me to get more involved. Now, Lord Fairfax is um, a, an honor named by each district supervisor for one lady and one lord. So I got the call um, earlier this year asking me to be Lord Fairfax for 2017. So it was fantastic. God, it, it actually felt like a home for the first time. I felt like I was, I could call something home. New Hope Housing, they felt like my family. They were my family. I can tell you this enough, if it wasn't for New Hope Housing, I know I wouldn't be here. I really wouldn't. And that's why I wanted to tell them, thank you for what you've done for me. If you want to make a difference, you can make a difference. There are opportunities to make a difference in ending homelessness. The main thing is that, that you have a desire. You know, if you want to end homelessness, if you want to end your homelessness, you can do it. It just takes a little bit of hard work and, and perseverance, but I'm living proof that with that hard work, with that perseverance, life can get tremendously better.